You recording? Mm -hmm. You recording? This is Zurich Valve Disassembly 101. So we want to go through a few of the basics here, the specific processes on video. Um, so if you don't see it or I'm not here to deliver it, like in this case, you can still move forward. So the valve here is mostly assembled um, and we've got on the back wall here, I've got these valves set up and I actually numbered the table. One, two, three, four, all the way down the line. There's a container for each one for the small parts. And we're going to do uh, five for the first block and four for the second block for valves. And we'll break up in teams of five to six. So your valve is pretty much assembled, give or take a few parts. That's the goal when, when our last class put them back together. I'm gonna go through the process of disassembly here. And um, first of all, fasteners on this. We want you to figure out what style and size fasteners these are, metric or standard, um, specifically what's the thread pitch, all that kind of stuff. But you find the right wrench for the job, loosen this set screw nut here, and you're gonna slide the handle off the top. Now the handle stays as a sub-assembly, why? Because the handle, the releasing lever and the spring are really difficult to get back together once we punch this roll pin out. Come in close, zoom in. This is a roll pin, so you would drive it out with the drift or a punch like this. But getting this back together is difficult, so we leave this as a sub-assembly. Call it good. We have all these individual parts to use to measure off of. So we set this aside, okay, and that is as far as that needs to go. There should be four bolts holding your uh, plate in on the top. You can take those loose. Now I've just got one in here to expedite, and I've got it finger tight. So we take our dial is the term off the top and we're down to the inside here inside this shaft there's normally going to be a uh, snap ring and that's what that's called that retains this in there should be a washer on here too but in this case there's not either way we want to take the snap ring out just to learn how these work and what they do they're a retaining ring to keep something from sliding out the tool for that is a snap ring pliers so on the left hand side of this drawer i'm going to have hammer adjustable wrench, a couple drifts here or punches, and this specialized tool, the snap ring pliers. So how do you use it? Well, it's a double acting pliers, so it can squeeze together in this case and draw these two holes together. You're gonna have to come in close for this. So we line up on these two holes, get them to insert there, and then we squeeze this together and it's gonna compress the ring and like a game of operation, we bring this out. Try not to let it go flying. We would put that component into our container bin along with our bolts. And once that snap ring is out, we can take a pliers and twist well, where this is not gonna come out yet because we got one more step. We've gotta get our roll pin here aligned or turned so it's vertical. And you may wanna use a handle to do that. Okay, get it as vertical as possible. And we are going to drive that roll pin out of this disc. Now, we can't drive it into the table. We gotta keep an eye. We can get a start on it. We might have to gap something so the table can work well to do this if we just gap it so that the pin can come out. So we need a hammer and a drift. We're gonna line up on this roll pin. I can use my finger as a guide. We have to hit it fairly hard to get it to move. We can see we're driving it close to flush now. And then as we get it close to all the way out, oh, it already fell out. We don't wanna lose it on the floor. So that is our roll pin. This pin is a compressible pin. You can see that this end has already been kind of permanently compressed, but it will stay in, pay in place by friction because it gets compressed down a little bit. Drop that in our small containers. Next step is to pull the shaft out of the valve body. So you should be able to clamp onto this with the pliers. Twist and pull might be a two person action. It takes quite a bit of force for me to do it. Okay, that is out. Won't fit in there, but we'll put it in there. And now we've got to take our uh, disc out of here too. And it's been beaten on before, I won't lie. Um, there's no doubt here. If we could use some kind of a sacrificial or softer punch, like brass would be ideal, uh, that would help. Or 
we can knock it out of here. Okay. And our disc comes out. Now what's left in the valve body, the data plate is gonna stay on there. We can measure that in place. The gasket, we've got a couple spare gaskets. So if you were assigned to the gasket, this one we've gotten out of here without destroying it. These gaskets are actually glued into place and there's another, com uh, another piece in between here called the fiber disc. And I'll show you an example of that. This is kind of a cool example of a quarter section here. And if we look at the inside of this, it's smooth, okay, Op uh, fully open and flat. This fiber disc is placed in as an intermediary to help glue in the rubber gasket. So some of you might have been assigned the fiber disc, and that is the component here that goes in place of the gasket. Um, other than that, we have our valve body then. We can use this to take some critical measurements as far as getting the heights correct. Um, if you are modeling the valve body, probably the most critical measurements are the center of this hole relative to the flat surface on top here, that distance. Um, the spacing of those, those four holes are all, um, what would we say, this axis right here is 90 degrees perpendicular to the center line axis of these two holes. So that would be important. And then this axis is 45 degrees off of the center axis of the valve body. So 45 here, and then we would go 90 over to here, another 90 down to that one. There are set screws in the side. As far as figuring out the uh, thread pitch of these holes, one of our valve bodies has a couple bolts threaded in it. They're grade eights, as you can see, but you could use these bolts for measurement and to, to determine what the thread pitch of the holes are, okay? Finally, as a group, you can take a Sharpie and sign your names onto the valve body. That's the one that you're working on. We got Calvin Rangel here, spring 2018, Logan Carlson. Who else is on here? Seth Jenkins, Tegan South. Tegan's still in the house. Uh, so you sign your name. When you get it completely disassembled, then we will leave the major components along the back wall here, kind of where, where their parking spot is, okay? And you can take your individual component and start taking critical measurements. The measurements should be taken with a dial caliper. So you should measure as precision as you can with the dial caliper, critical things like diameters, uh, distance between centers, uh, everything you would need in order to make the part again. What am I missing? Put tools away when you're done. Uh, back into the toolbox for the second block class. There are some free or loose components in here. As I had mentioned, extra dial, shaft, top handle, releasing lever. So if you got assigned these parts, uh, it may be better, and valve bodies. Sometimes those who got assigned valve bodies wanna check one out, take it home. That's fine too, okay? So there are some loose parts in here too if you have assigned an additional part or there's two people in your group that have the same part. Otherwise, uh, that's gonna keep you busy. Once you get fully disassembled, you would find your component, take measurements, sketch that in your notebook, annotate that with the correct measurements, and then start modeling it in Fusion. Same.